Well, folks, we are truly living through a historic stock market. Silicon Valley Bank's failure is the second biggest collapse of a commercial bank in U.S. history after Washington Mutual's failure in 2008. And this failure comes at a super interesting time in the stock market as the Fed is looking to raise interest rates even more aggressively as it turns out inflation is starting to tick up. But believe it or not, there are some signs of the stock market route potentially coming to an end following this collapse in Silicon Valley. I don't want to repeat this stuff. You guys have probably already read on the media. Obviously, 2022 was a difficult time where bonds got destroyed more than stocks. The simple reason why Silicon Valley Bank collapsed is, as you can see, amortization impacted the held to maturity bonds the most, as we saw one of the worst performances across the board last year. The Vanguard Total Bond Market Index Fund had one of its worst years in its 100 year history. That is including 2008. We did not see a route like this in 2008, which is what differentiates the current collapse from 2008 the most. You see, back in 08, we had massive investment firms that were monopolistic in many scenarios over leverage themselves on mortgage backed securities. As the real estate bubble popped in 2006 and 2007, those mortgage-backed securities were losing value on hands over fist. That's what led to Lehman's Brothers and Bear Stearns to go under, and that's resulted in the Fed stepping in in 2009 in their massive asset relief program. This time around in 2023, we're not experiencing a real estate crisis driven by mortgage-backed securities. Instead, we're seeing a startup and tech bubble blow up right in front of our eyes. You can clearly see that through the performance of the ARK Innovation Fund, which obviously holds some of the biggest and highest risk unprofitable tech startups in the country. When you have these indices on the public market underperform, you know that the private equity market for startups is likely struggling even more. And as you can see, this tech bubble wasn't just induced by pandemic driven stimulus. Silicon Valley Bank's deposits were going up throughout 2010 to 2020, but as you can see, they clearly accelerated in 2020 and 2021 as low interest rates propped up the startup market and people were rushing to invest their money in early stage companies. And there was no better way to identify the insane frenzy we saw over the past few years than with the IPO and SPAC market, which blew up in 2021. We had a record amount of companies go public and make their insiders rich to an unbelievable level. This is partly what drove inflation as people in the very big brackets of the US tax income spent money like crazy on tangible assets. And when you have companies in the public markets be so successful, that drives up demand in the private equity space for more startups to be formed. And believe it or not, the healthcare sector occupied much more of the IPO pie than the high tech space. Obviously, big tech companies like Microsoft, Apple, and Google show us the potential of wealth creation for investors in the technology space, but the biotech space, which is arguably magnitudes more risky than big tech, is what has seen the biggest amount of capital infusion. A significant percentage of SVP's depositors are biotech companies that are either in the therapeutics or biopharma space which obviously are historically known to be extremely cash burning businesses. Most of these biotech companies never make money. That is, even if they have any revenue, most biotechs get delisted on the Nasdaq and the New York Stock Exchange at a faster pace than any other industry. And this is exactly what led to someone like Silicon Valley Bank going under. When SVB realizes that, hey, my companies are burning cash like crazy and all of a sudden my deposits are going down at a time when I'm already competing against the US government's treasury bills for depositors. All of a sudden, the bank has no money left, especially when they invested their assets into US treasuries themselves. And obviously, when a bank that manages over $210 billion of US assets goes under, the government has to step in. 
And that is exactly what the insurance organization of the Fed, the FDIC, did on Friday. And this is where I think things get super interesting. Yes, this could play out like 2008 when Bear Stearns went under and they got bought out by JP Morgan, which led to a contagion of other investment firms going down. But I think the Fed has learned their lesson from 2008, which could result in a very different outcome for 2023. This time around, this bubble is not being driven by real estate or insurance companies that are directly linked to U.S. households. Crypto, biotech, and small tech startups are typically not big employers and don't take up a big proportion of the U.S. unemployment rate, which means the Fed has more tools at their disposal to help save the Silicon Valley Bank, and it potentially also acts as their warning signal that they might have done too much too fast. And as we all clearly know, every single time the Fed is raising interest rates at an aggressive pace, something always breaks. This time in 2022 and 2023, it was not clear what broke in the economic cycle, which made it very difficult for us to predict the Fed pivoting anytime soon. We saw the FDX collapse in November and the crypto markets go down, even the stock market being down 30% with the NASDAQ. But we didn't see anything break in the US economic system. But I think as of March 12th, 2023, the Fed has found its red flag, the biggest lender to high tech startups in a space that drove inflation for the past couple of years has just gone under. This is what happens when you raise interest rates so much and bond prices collapse, which means the Fed has a signal to potentially stop raising interest rates at an aggressive pace. Because obviously, when people are rushing out of US banks in hopes to prevent another collapse, people are going to likely stop spending money as fast as they previously did. Keep in mind, even with the 22% drawdown of the S&P 500, we have had the worst US stock and bond performance combined since 2000. In 2008, we saw bonds go down around 6%, but in 2022, we saw bonds go down more than 13%, even if the stock market of 2008 performed much worse than in 2022. You have to look both sides of the coin, and it seems like in terms of extremist performances to the downside, 2022 is up there. And with Silicon Valley Bank's failure, we are just seeing the ripple effects of that. As of the filming of this video, the FDIC has put up SBB's assets on auction, which means some of the biggest firms in the country have their opportunity at dismantling the toxic assets that this company has. This likely will help prevent contagion in the future, but this also means there are opportunities to make money even if markets provide more downside. The FDIC has put up SVB's assets on auction to allow some of the biggest firms in the US to dismantle the company's toxic assets, but we have yet to see who that will be and what the Fed will do in the form of its own pivot narrative. If SVB's failure does result in a heightened unemployment rate, more job losses, and people losing money from both investments and bonds, I think the Fed and the government have a high likelihood of launching something like the TAR program of 2008, where they all of a sudden inject cash into companies like JP Morgan, Morgan Stanley, and Goldman Sachs to help reprieve some of the damage being done by SVB's high-risk investments. And trust me, there is no way around the idea of a bailout. The government will always try its best to help prevent economic dismantling. Either the Fed can use this as a way to tame inflation more, or they will let this play out for as little as possible. It's going to be up to the government to decide, not really private investors. Even though this could result in the stock market being down another 5 to 10% over the next few months, I don't see this as an end for the investment thesis for the long term. This is simply a short-term bubble in the massive tech, biotech, and consumer-driven spaces, which is just popping and correcting back to its rightful level. 
But as usual, guys, this is just my take on the situation. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Take care.